In this video, I'm gonna show you how to boot Kali Linux off a USB flash drive. So in this example, I'm booting Kali directly off this USB flash drive. But I don't just wanna show you how to do that. I wanna show you how to get persistency. So how to create a USB flash drive that has persistency so that when you change settings, for instance, connect to a wireless network or create a file, all of that information is held or is persistent across reboots. So in this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps, how to download the required software, how to set up the USB flash drive for persistency, how to write the information to the flash drive, how to set up the BIOS of your computer. In some cases, you may need to go into the BIOS of your laptop and set it to boot off the USB flash drive, you may also be required to turn off a secure boot to get this to work. But once again, in this video, I'm gonna show you all the steps to get this working so that you can boot Kali off a USB flash drive with persistency. Let's get started. Now, there are two things that you need to download. You need to download Kali and you need to download some software to write Kali to the USB flash drive. So. On the Kali website, go to Downloads, Download Kali Linux. Select this version, Kali Linux 64-bit Live. You don't want to get the installer version because you don't want to install Kali on your hard drive. You want to get the live version because you want to boot Kali off the USB flash drive or thumb drive if you prefer. So click on that to download Kali Linux to your local computer. Now in this example, I've pre-downloaded it because sometimes I find that the downloads are very slow. This file is about three and a half gig in size. The next thing you need to download is software and there are multiple options for this, but I'm gonna download Rufus. You can download this either from GitHub or from the rufus.ie website. When you click on the download link, it'll take you to the same place. So in this example, I'm gonna download Rufus 3.13. That's actually downloading the software from GitHub. So as you can see here, GitHub production. So you could either download it from GitHub or download it from the Rufus website. So that's downloaded now. So I'm gonna double click on the file. Windows is complaining that I didn't download this from the Microsoft App Store. I'm happy with that, so I'm gonna click Install anyway. I'm gonna say yes to allow the device to make changes to my computer. The software is now ready, so I'm gonna plug in the USB flash drive. So volume is detected. Now it's detected that the Kingston USB drive is 32 gig in size. It's already got multiple partitions. That's okay because I'm gonna wipe that USB flash drive. I need to select the ISO that I'm going to write. So in this example, I'm gonna write the Kali 2020.4 live ISO file. So click open. And here's the trick to get persistency. Drag this option, persistent partition size. In my example, I can use 25 gig for the persistent partition. Kelly needs about four gig, so that's what I have available. And now I can simply click start to write this image to the USB thumb drive or flash drive. Now I'm told that there's a problem and additional software needs to be downloaded. Do I wanna download the software? Answer is yes. And then I'm told that all data on the device will be destroyed. Am I happy to do that? Yes. I'm warned once again that I'll be responsible for deleting all the information on that USB flash drive. Happy with that, so I'm gonna click okay. Partitions have been deleted. Drive is being formatted. And now all you have to do basically is wait for the drive to be formatted and the software to be written. So at this point, I'm gonna speed up the video so that you don't have to wait a long time for that to take place. Okay, so in my example, that took about 18 minutes to complete. Now that that's done, I can click close and I can reboot 
my computer. Now in my example, I need to keep holding F2 down to boot this laptop into its BIOS. Now have a look at the documentation for your laptop to see how you boot it into its BIOS. You need to do this because we firstly need to tell the laptop to boot off the USB and you may have to remove secure boot. Okay, so in my example, I'm gonna to go to boot and then I'm gonna specify that the Kingston flash drive is the first device to boot off. Under security, I'm also gonna remove secure boot. So make sure that you've done that, otherwise you may have problems booting off the USB flash drive. Okay, I'm gonna save my changes and exit. Okay, laptop is booting up. And as you can see, it's booted Kali off the USB flash drive. So what I'm gonna select is Live System Persistence and press Enter to boot Kali. And there you go, Kali has now booted off the USB flash drive, but let's prove that it's persistent. So one of the first things I'm gonna do is select a wireless network. Wireless network I wanna to connect to is the TP-Link wireless network. I need to put in a password. So this is a little test network. I'll put in my password and click connect. Okay, so we've now connected to the wireless network. Let's prove that by opening Firefox and I'll go to Kali.org as an example, click on one of the articles where they're talking about Kali in the last 12 months and what they're planning to do in 2021. Okay, so I've been able to connect to the internet. Let's create a folder on the desktop and I'll just call this test. And inside here, I'll create a document. Test one, not very original, but there you go. And I'll just say, test Kelly. And I'll save that document. Okay, so on the desktop, I've got this document. So now let's see what happens when we reboot. We'll double check now whether the document is still there and whether I can still access the wireless network. If the settings were preserved, in other words, we have persistency, I'll be able to connect back to the wireless network and I'll still have that document on the desktop. Okay, so gonna select a live system persistence. Okay, so as you can see, Kelly has booted and notice I still have my document on the desktop. So it's preserved the document. And if I open up Firefox, I can still connect to the internet. And for instance, browse on the internet because Kali has remembered the Wi-Fi details. So we have persistency. I've successfully created a persistent Kali flash drive. So what I'll do now is shut Kali down. I'll remove the USB flash drive and turn the computer on again. And notice it now boots into Windows. So I can boot back into Windows again because I've removed this USB flash drive. Okay, so there you go. That's how you set up Kali on a USB flash drive and set it for persistency. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. Wanna wish you all the very best. I've been